love your beautiful faces. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> we're, we're very happy to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you all know why you're here, and this is Trina Nishimura. <laughs> Star of the Family on Titan. Uh, that's true, that's true, I'm in that show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, just, just kind of opening up, um, I've, I've, I'm nagged if you guys don't care. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Attack on Titan is a phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, so, before we get to that, yeah. um, let's go a little bit further back. Uh, and What got you started into this? So, like, I, I know that you started acting at a very early age. I did. Uh, from Amarillo, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, so I, uh, I was born in California, but I was raised in Texas, specifically Amarillo, Texas, which is in the Texas Panhandle. You guys are from Florida, so you know what a panhandle is. Yeah. Um, you'd be surprised when I say it at other places like New York or Michigan, people are like, pan what? And I'm like, come on, Michigan. You say your, your state's a yeah, pan. Yeah, you're a glove, really? right? Give us a panhandle, it's fine. Uh, so I started acting, uh, or I started auditioning, rather, when I was nine years old with my local community theater. Um, and I started touring professionally with a theater uh, group when I was 13 years old. And uh, I acted all the way through high school. Um, I've been to, that's not ominous at all. <laughs> uh, that's nice. Uh, so then I started, I was acting uh, all the way through high school and then uh, I went to college and I was gonna go to law school. My plan was to go into maritime law. Um, and uh, I was in college, so I was broke, because that's your job in college. I was really good at it. And uh, I was broke, and a friend told me about an audition. I was like, no, Jimmy, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm gonna be a lawyer, I'm gonna be serious. He was like, it pays. And I was like, when is it? Um, so I auditioned uh, for Funimation, actually. And, uh, <laughs> and I was cast uh, about 20 years ago. Um, when I was in college. Uh, that was my very first uh, dubbing experience. Uh, I've done some other stuff like commercials and movies and stuff like that. Um, and But yeah, that was my very first voiceover or dubbing experience it was at Funimation for a show called Desert Punk. Yeah. I was the little girl named uh, Namiko. Uh, she was in every episode, but she was just always hungry to go. I'm so hungry, and like things are exploding around them. She's like, I'm hungry. She's cute. So that's how I got started. That's also, so from maritime law. That was my goal. <laughs> I was mistaken. Surprise. Right. Um, yeah. So I've been acting my whole life, um, and I just thought uh, when I, you know, because when you go to college and and you're inundated with a message that you have to be X or Y to be society to be socially successful or whatever to meet somebody else's expectations of yourself. Um, and uh, when I was in college, I started acting again, right, with Funimation, and then I was like, why don't I just meet my own expectations for me instead of everybody else's? Yes. Uh, right? I mean, yeah. isn't that the goal? Um, so yeah, so I was like, hey guys, I'm not gonna go to law school. And my family was like, and you're gonna what instead? <laughs> uh, and I was like, it's gonna be great. Yeah, trust me, trust me, it's gonna be great. And they were like, mm. <laughs> uh, my grandfather was very disappointed, um, and uh, he he told people uh, until uh, he passed. He he would say that that I scream for a living because he had he had no idea what I did, and I, I wanted to show him something epic. So I showed him my most epic scream from Evangelion 2.22. I was like, Papa, you have to see it. It's so cool. It's so cool. And I showed it to him, and he's like, so you just scream for a living? That's all you do? I was like, yeah, I mean, we'll say that, yeah. Right. Uh, so it's a, it's a weird thing, but uh, yeah, so maritime law to this. That's fascinating. So one of the things that I always like to ask, you know, to ask actors is, you know, when did you, what was the point that you realized, like, oh, this is, this can be a job. Oh, this... I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Do you mind if I drink a... You're fine. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. This, you, 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 Thank you. You're good. I'm pretty sure it was six feet. It's fine. Um, but one of the things I always like to ask Astros is, when did you realize that this could be something that you do? Like, there's a lot of people like you just. It's the magic box. It just happens. They don't realize that it can really be a thing. But with you, it was obviously very early. Um, starting at, doing auditions at nine. Yeah, yeah. So, I was stubborn. I was, I was a shit of a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scanning for minors. I'm like, oh my god. Um, yeah, I was a sassy little girl. Um, I just really loved singing and dancing, and I, I was in ballet from the time I was three uh, until uh, 
until my career ended at nine. Because that's how ballet works, or that's how it used to work. Uh, they're much nicer kids now. Um, they really are. Uh, but like when you break your, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I started acting, sorry, you wouldn't hear about voice acting. Uh, so I started acting at nine and auditioning. Um, my mom didn't know anything about theater or theater life or theater moms. Um, and I just kind of, uh, I've always been a fairly stubborn and independent person and I was like, this is what we're doing now, mom. Uh, and then they were like, I auditioned for the tour and they, uh, they were like, oh, this is great. And my mom uh, is a single mom and raised four kids on her own because she's incredibly strong and brave and smart. Uh, right? Uh, she's amazing. Uh, crazy. And I love her. Um, crazy. Yeah, she's insane. Um, I feel like the roles have reversed. Like now it's my turn, right? right. Uh, so yeah, um, so at 13 I was like, I really want to do this, and she couldn't leave the other three kids, and so I actually went on the road by myself at 13. <laughs> I think that's illegal now, but... Um, right. Different time. Different time. <laughs> different time, you know. It was right. another era. I, yeah, I don't know how that was legal. <laughs> but here we are. Right. Well, it's, so do you think that stubbornness has really kind of helped you in your career, kind of moving back towards... Uh, mm -hmm. Getting into that stubbornness. I know you said before it was, it was oh, it's a paying gig. You know, you're in college. Pay is a magical word. Um, <coughs> but do you think that stubbornness really kind of helped you? Like, okay, this is this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm changing my my direction. I'm you know, it's it is different. Uh, but I'm going to move into this. And that stubbornness is kind of really what pushed you forward. Is it the uh, is it, it is it like the work ethic from from doing stage acting and. and being around a company and all that, that's really kind of what, do you think that's really what helped you or is it something else? Um, I think that <clears throat> I think that if you're an actor or if, as I'm sure some of you in this room are, if you're a creative, right? Uh, you're used to being told no. You're told no over and over and over. Your work's not good enough or they can't be featured or you didn't get the audition or whatever it is, right? Uh, so as a creative and as an artist, um, I think you just develop a thick skin at a very young age. Uh, my first agent, um, I think I got my first agent when I was 12, um, and they <clears throat> they were um, adamant that I had to change my name. They were like, well, you need to change your name, because uh, I'm old. Right. And um, <clears throat> back in the day, diversity was not celebrated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they thought that my last name, being Nishimura, was too off-putting to casting agents. Uh, and that I put you in a specific spot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, no, there weren't. There weren't. Or just no spots at all. There were no spots. Yeah. <laughs> like all, sure. all people uh, representation on television in the '90s was mostly white people. Mm -hmm. um, so they needed to make me more passable mm -hmm. and sellable. Um, and at 11, you don't understand what those words are. Right. Um, and so I had a long conversation with my mom actually, and I was like. I don't know what passable is, and she's like, something that assholes say. And I was right. like, oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> like your mom. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, and I, she was like, they want you to change your name. How do you feel about that? I was like, what would I change it to? And she's like, well, you could, if you want to change your name, uh, we could, you could use my last name, because uh, uh, my mom's white, my dad's Japanese. Um, and I was like, but your last name's Nishimura. And she was like, it is, but you could use, you know, Papa's last name. Um, and I was like, but that's not who I am. And she's like, that's right. right. And the rest of your life, people are going to tell you that you should be something, but that's not who you are. Right. And you just have to continue to be who you are. So, like, I think I just took that over in everything in my life. I'm like, oh, no, that's not who I am. No, no. Uh, just in general. So I think that's that. Plus, um, I work a lot. Uh, and try really hard to work a lot. So uh, I think the work ethic that my mother actually and my mother and grandfather instilled in me uh, is pretty prevalent. Mm. To be, you know, it's a hard job. Right. It's interesting that you use that word passable, where it's just like that's it's basically a masking word for losing your identity and yeah. for you to realize that so poignantly, mm -hmm. so quickly. That's clearly you have you have good head on your shoulders and kudos to your mom. Oh, right. Um, She's for cool. Explaining that. Um, yeah. So. With that and, and taking that kind of intelligence and, and, and understanding uh, of your situations, um, I do kind of want to go back a little bit more. Um, so you go from you know, uh, traveling and, and, and stage acting and, and, and you know, theater troupe with voice acting. It's it can be a group experience. It can right. be you know table read and multiple people, but 
do you, in the instances where you are just in a booth or yeah. just by yourself, is it, is that like a night and day switch? Do you still kind of keep that behind you? Like, what is that like? Uh, going from stage acting and film acting to voice acting was definitely different um, because uh, especially with dubbing, like the, everything is pre-laid, which means that all of the animation has already been drawn. So uh, you go into a booth and there are two screens and on one screen there's the original animation and on the other there's a script in English. And so you watch the scene or you watch the line uh, and there's three beeps, it's like beep, beep, beep. And on the fourth imaginary beep is when you start talking and also when your character's mouth starts to move. And it's your job to make sure that the words fit in the mouth so that it doesn't look like crazy town. Right? right. Um, and so uh, you go in and, and you, these choices have already been drawn and these choices have already been made. But it's up to you as the actor to portray uh, what's going on, the original intention of the show, uh, the uh, script adaptation to English, and also the director's desires and wants, and make it all fit into this. Uh, but on stage, uh, I get to choose how long I pause for. Mm. So it's... The whole time. You, yeah, you're working at... Working at... Sorry, I'm stepping away. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. I'm not a theater actor. <laughs> no, um. you're okay. <laughs> uh, there are choices you get to make in film and theater that you don't get to make in voice acting. Uh, it also frequently theater and film are group activities uh, and voice acting is you and a director and an engineer and a padded room. Mm. Uh, so I have lots of voices in my head and exist in a padded room. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's different in, in a lot of ways, but it's also equally re rewarding and um, gratifying. And I've been really fortunate to be cast as some really dynamic uh, characters that uh, have uh, helped to shape a, a lot of aspects of mm -hmm. my life, and so uh, I'm very, very lucky. Very lucky. Most so, luck. sorry. <laughs> so, with, so, with those characters, you're saying how it kind of shaped your life. So, you're, do you take those the, the kind of experiences that you've had in your life, and do you? There's, there's a couple different methods to acting. Like, so with yours, do you? Is it far more method? Like, how how into the character, and how much do you bring from personal experiences? Um, for for how to react to the view of the character inform you how is it what's your approach so there's a lot of different it's okay you can go honey you don't have to squat you're okay you can walk you're good you do you you do you um so what he's referring to is acting technique right so there are different schools of thought as far as performance um and so i personally i'm kind of a methody person uh, so we'll just take Attack on Titan, for example. In Attack on Titan, ooh, also, uh, no spoilers, please. I don't know what happens, and I'm not allowed to read ahead, so don't tell me if you know if I die. Uh, for real? Uh, for real? Yeah, I have no idea. Don't did tell you, me. I to did you, no, 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 no. Did, you watch, <laughs> did you watch the new episode? Uh, I, I, I'm not allowed, well, I'm not, I'm, I don't watch the new episodes. I don't read ahead. I go through the experience with the character in that moment. That is a choice that the director, Mike McFarland, has asked of me. I've worked with him on Love Bond, or on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as Love Bond, and Evangelion as Mari. Uh, so we've worked together a lot, and he's like, this is how I want you to approach the show, this is how I want you to approach the character, and so that's what I do. Uh, so, for example, in Attack on Titan, in the very first season, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to try and paint this in broad strokes. Uh, Mikasa, my character, is very attached to two little boys, Aaron and Armin. They're kind of like her adopted family unit. Uh, she is certainly more attached to Aaron because he's crazy and makes <laughs> poor choices. Um, and I too have a best friend who is crazy and makes poor choices. That's not true, he makes better choices than I do. I'm, I'm so crazy. But um, he and I have been best friends since we were 14. Um, it has always been purely platonic and in the first couple of seasons of Attack on Titan, Mikasa and Aaron's relationship was purely platonic and more uh, brother-sisterly sort of situation. Um, and so I related a lot of that to my friend Ty. So when there's something very tragic that happens to Aaron in episode four, um, and I, it was very uh, hard uh, because emotionally I put myself into the frame of mind that my best friend was dead, right? right? Uh, and I called him after we were done recording and I got to the car, I was like, Ty, I just wanted to say, he was like, were you using me again? And I was like, yeah, I'm using you again. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's usually, I, I take a lot of stuff uh, from my own personal experience, apply that to whatever the scene is uh, and make it my own in, in that way. Fascinating, I know. <laughs> 
peeling back the layers. <laughs> uh, so just kind of, I, I can't imagine what that's like, especially in this kind of ex this kind of environment where you're just like, I'm not allowed to know anything. Yeah. And everyone, I'm, like the whole room reacted with that. Like, how are you not like, yeah. they, you're basically taking all, like, all of them. I, I can't imagine what's going through your heads right now. You're like, you're not allowed to enjoy the things the way we enjoy them. That's yeah. not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> I'm dying to know, but like I also need to respect the, the director's choices because right. those are his choices, and, and and it's my job as an actor to facilitate his vision, right? Um, and I'm very fortunate to be in this position, and if that means that I'm not on Twitter or social media for the next three months, <laughs> that's but fine. That's such a that's such a it, it's it's a gift. It it really is a gift in a way because like you get to you get to watch the show the same way that everybody else does. You're yeah. a fan. You get to learn yeah. the it's awesome. way everybody else does. That's that is such a, a, a different experience than I think it, certainly that I ever thought that you know you would have being involved in the show. Yeah, some I mean some it depends on the actor, it depends on the show, it depends on the director. Uh, there are shows where the director will give me the entire manga series and be like, read all of this, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it really just depends, and that's where we're at now. But I, it it affects the choices that I make in the booth, certainly. Um, also, Attack on Titan is such a, you know, anyone could go at any time. There's no job security. Um, so, you know, I just, I didn't want to know uh, for a long time. And, and now with this, this uh, the series wrapping up, um, I'm excited that we're finally going to know, uh, or I'm finally going to know what happens. Uh, but I'm also sad, you know, it's, it's the end of a really special time. Well, it's, it's, it's with new, you know, with, with you know, closed door and you know, window opens or whatever that. Too. Yeah, I yeah. Really ruin that. But anyway, um, <laughs> so you definitely have a lot of opportunities, not just with you know, Attack on Titan and, and the other roles you mentioned. Like you are a part of some monstrous franchises, you know, even Yellian, which yeah. is which is an entire country's identity. In certain, right. Like there are some cities which is like, oh, this is an Evangelion city. <laughs> uh, there are robots just. Yeah. Stories tall. Um, so, to have you to really kind of be a part of that and, and realize that you're almost in some, like a zeitgeist. It's what is that like? Is that is is that kind of pressure daunting any time? Do you take it as a badge of honor? How does that? Um, it can be daunting. I mean, most actors that you meet really just want you to acknowledge their existence and say good job. Right. Uh, that's really you know um, much to the chagrin of our significant others. Like. <laughs> Affirm me, um, but yeah, um, it's, it's, it can be daunting, especially uh, Mari was a new character in Evangelion mm -hmm. uh, for the movies, and um, hundreds of people auditioned, and I have no idea, and I certainly didn't think I'd get it, uh, but I did, and that was really exciting and then terrifying, because I didn't want to let anybody down, and I didn't want anybody to be mad, um, but yeah, it's not really, I don't really think of my work like, <clears throat> like something that's, you know, that important. Um, I think that I'm, uh, well, one, I have three siblings, and if I ever did think I was too important, they would surely <laughs> tell me uh, and bring me back down. Um, but also, I think that um, when you start to think of yourself as uh, something that you're not, um, or somebody that's better than anybody else, or somebody that's more important than anybody else, I think that that kind of sets a person up to be, um, to propagate a negative reaction and effect uh, within one's community. Um, I am always shocked that people want to meet me. I think it's crazy. Um, I'm always honored uh, that people uh, know who I am. That's amazing and weird. Um, I mean, I poop, you know, everybody poops. Uh, so I'm just a person uh, that just happened to have, have a weird job with a screen. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, I think most of it's weird. Like getting recognized in the grocery store when you're buying tampons and your pajamas, you know? <laughs> That's awkward. Right. Um, I've had people like find my house. Like I'm like a level of famous that's like just below security, you know? Uh, and like opening the door like with a toothbrush hanging out of my mouth and like a robe and being like, hello? Like that was a mistake. Right. Uh, I don't open my door anymore. That was crazy. Um, was this kid and he was like, "Will you sign my Mika the Pop?" I was like, "You shouldn't be here, man." <laughs> <laughs> like that was awesome. It's a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird place to be yeah. in. So are you still in Texas? I am. Yes. So I split my uh, pre-pandemic. I was 
uh, pre-pandemic and pre-project, I was splitting my time between LA and Texas, mostly in Texas. Uh, my partner, my life partner, uh, the love of my life and, and everything, um, he and I opened our first business pre-pandemic. Um, he's a chef, which is very lucky for me. Uh, <laughs> get a chef, guys. Get a chef significant other. It's awesome. I gained 40 pounds, but I'm very happy. Um, is the restaurant Mikasa thing? Yeah, so um, there was a Mikasa uh, action figure in the restaurant. It was actually a Japanese restaurant, an izakaya. Um, and we were doing really well. We, uh, I don't know if you guys know what a James Beard Award is. It's like the Oscars of the food world. Uh, we got a James Beard nod. That was amazing. Nice. Uh, really, really exciting. And then the pandemic happened. That was not amazing. And then, um, and then my partner was diagnosed with leukemia. He's fine now. We're getting oh. through it. Um, but the restaurant closed, and and so we're in Texas indefinitely, uh, and uh, at least until he's done with his treatment. And that's where we're at until something changes. And then I would like to move somewhere quiet. Like very quiet and spend a year not screaming into a can and not going to the hospital and not doing anything and we're just going to exist in a quiet place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who doesn't want to live in a quiet place? But I want to be like Narnia where there's also like seven tailed foxes just walking through the, the world and I'm like, oh yeah, that's just one of ours that's drinking tea. Uh, that's my dreamland. But that doesn't exist. Or does it? Um, yeah, so that's, I'm in Texas. So the short answer, yes. <laughs> Texas. We won't go too far in it because you like to brush your teeth in peace. Um, so um, we'll, we'll go ahead and we can open up the questions. Um, so we'll be able to do this. We got a microphone right here. Um, just make sure we line up single file. Um, respect each other's distance, six feet, all that happy stuff. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and stand up and, and ask them. Um, we've got... That's from the Price is Right. Hello. So. Oh, your mic isn't on. It's the switch. Oh. Oh, you're good. Okay, I'll be right here. Thank you. Such a gentleman. I appreciate you, sir. Do you want my microphone? That defeats the purpose. But I can talk loudly. Do you want my microphone? Oh God! <laughs> Teamwork. Woo. We got this. We did it. Hello. 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 I can't wait for the dub for the second half to start. Same, same, bro. Same, same. <laughs> so I know you want to avoid. This. We can talk through the first half of season four here, right? We've the first half. Um, if you guys don't want any spoilers, uh, raise your hand if you haven't seen. All of season. It's okay. Don't be ashamed. You know, it happens. It's fine. It's okay. So let's try and keep the spoilers to a minimum, All if right. possible. Okay. So Mikasa has some big moments in the first half of season four. Yes. So what was your reaction to some of them, especially the one where they're all sitting down for dinner? Oh man. Oh. 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 That was my reaction. That was exactly my reaction. I was like, oh no. Um, yeah, it, it, the, the journey that Mikasa has been on uh, just over the course of her life is amazing to me in a lot of ways um, and terrifying at the same time. Um, I mean, if you think about art, right, art of any kind, art is a reflection of the society that it's made in, uh, which is to say, um, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get my soapbox out. Uh, so when I started in anime about 20 years ago, uh, women in anime were uh, drawn a certain way. Uh, they were only considered successful if they uh, ha were attached to a male protagonist. Uh, their entire purpose within the show was to move the story on for the male. Uh, they were frequently um, well endowed. Uh, but scantily clad, uh, they couldn't be. They could. They couldn't be very strong. Um, they couldn't be, uh, you know, too smart. Um, and uh, what I love about Attack on Titan and about Mikasa's journey in general is that one, she's a female, but she's the strongest out of all of the group, out of everybody, man, woman, etc. Uh, she's the strongest. 
Uh, two, she's fully clothed the entire time. I mean, we giggle, but it's true. Like, you know, Xena Warrior Princess was cold, man. She was cold, and that stuff does not, you know, she's fully clothed, and three, uh, she's not just, her story is not just about romantic love. It's about friendship and devotion to one's adopted family. Uh, and similarly, Armin, uh, who's a male in the show, is not physically capable. He doesn't have a six pack because that's another completely irrational idea uh, that we're fed over and over that that's what a woman looks like. That's what a man looks like in order to be successful. And that's not true. Um, and that men can't, men can't be smart. Uh, men can't have emotions. And I think that that's really messed up. And I love that there's a female character that's, that's you know, stronger than the male. I love that there's a male character that is smarter than uh, some of the females. And I love that he gets to have emotions. I love that he gets to cry. He cries a lot, but I love that yeah. he gets to. Uh, there's another character within the show that isn't assigned a gender at all. Um, so I think that Mikasa going through that journey has been so special to me. And every time something happens to her, whether it's good or bad, significant or insignificant, it's always really special to me because this is the first time in a long time that I've been able to uh, be a character that is affecting change. So that's my answer. Good luck. Good luck. We can talk about poop again. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. And also, I always curious because we didn't never got to see it. Okay, let's jump back a season to season three. Okay. What was your and by extension, how did Mikasa react to the humongous twist at the end of season three? the revelations um you know i think she was just in shock uh and she was like i could really use a beach day you know so that's what they had i wish they had a spa day i mean don't we all need a spa day uh but yeah that's that's i i love the character and i'm glad she got at least you know 10 seconds at the beach with her friends that's nice thank you for your question thank you <laughs> you did it <laughs> That's an old thing from the old. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Well, first, just thank you for being here talking to all of us. It's really cool to get to ask you questions. Coming off of what you just answered, obviously, you're talking really highly of a lot of characters in the show. I mean, Mika says badass, and she obviously love Armin and everything. Do you have a favorite character from the show that's not Mikasa, or is Mikasa your favorite? Sasha. Sasha. Yeah. 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 I love Sasha. When I auditioned for the show, Sasha was the first person that I auditioned for because we, we were reading this. I was reading the sides preparing for the audition, and it was like Sasha loves potatoes. I was like, I love potatoes because <laughs> um, I really do. Like I could talk for hours about potatoes, and I know that sounds that sounds completely lame, but like I love potato recipes. I love potato pasta. I love potatoes that are baked. I love potatoes that are scalloped. I love potatoes that you like put together in layer. Have you guys seen those? We're talking potatoes. <laughs> I love potatoes. Yeah. I mean, I love potatoes. Uh, Sasha. Awesome. I love her. Oh, she's so cute. She's great. She's, well, was so, so. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 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 First of all, I just would love to say thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for taking your time and coming and meeting most of your fans. And yes, I was the kid downstairs who you signed the book for. But before I do begin my question, I just want to say that your husband, uh, he does have a dream of mine where I personally want to become a chef. Oh, cool! The reason because is I personally love helping others and love caring for others. And I can relate to a lot of characters in Attack on Titan. And not only that, in Demon Slayer, mm -hmm. that love to do that. So my question is, for me to you, how would you feel, um, how would you feel, like how is it, or when was it that you first felt emotionally attached to Mikasa Ackerman as a character? Uh, I first felt emotionally attached to Mikasa Ackerman as a character, I think it was maybe the second or third session of, of working, with, working on her. Um, <clears throat> so in, Excuse me. In the first few seasons of Attack on Titan, um, there uh, Mikasa is different, right? The majority of the 
uh, characters in Attack on Titan in the first few seasons are, they look a particular way. They're Germanic. The pronunciations of the names is like a pseudo-German sort of situation. Uh, and she's a mixie, and she was the only one. Um, so that was kind of, uh, I was like, did you gas me because I'm half and she's half? Uh, but yeah, um, I had related to her then, and then uh, she goes through this incredibly traumatic moment uh, where, where some, she's a child and something really awful happens to her parents and then she's taken away um, by these awful people who are human traffickers, right? Um, and I think that was when, um, because as, as awful and as, as dark and as sinister and as horrific as that is, it is a reality in the world, right? And it's something that affects so many people, whether we're in America or in Sudan. Um, and I think that being able to tell a story of people that have been in a place like that and fought back, uh, or people that have just been hurt in a way um, and decided to fight, uh, I think that, which isn't to say that people that don't fight is, are, are any lesser, but um, she really resonated with me in that moment. Um, and I kind of, <laughs> I fell in love with her trauma. Um, yeah, so I, I love that she gets to be a real character and a real human. Um, and real things happen. I mean, I love magical girl shows too, and I'm in a lot of them, um, but I, I just, I really love her. And so probably like, I guess that was like season, or that was like episode two or three, uh, when she's like, I'm cute and happy and innocent, and then like drama. No, uh, so that, that's when I fell in love with Okay, thank you so much for answering my question. It's my pleasure, thank you so much for your question, and good luck with your dream, honey. Good luck with you. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so first of all, when you started doing Attack on Titan, did you think it would be such a dark show? No. <laughs> no. No. I mean, I thought it would be heavy, but I had no idea the depths uh, that it would go into. Um, because Attack on Titan, while it reflects a shift in societal norms, it's, it also reflects society in such a way that is brutally honest. And I was not expecting that much honesty. Uh, that was a little scary. Also, do you have any tips for voice acting? Do I have any tips for voice acting? Would you like to become a voice actor? Yes. Uh, by show of hands, who would like to become a voice actor? Ooh, one, two, three, that's a lot. All right, Trina's 101, uh, becoming a voice actor. Uh, so number one, um, everybody has a different story about their entry into voice acting. Uh, so don't like listen to somebody's story and be like, that's what I'm gonna do, and if I do A, B, and C, I'm gonna be successful. Because in acting, there is no guarantee, there is no direct equation, and there is no um, magic pill or class or anything that will make you successful. Uh, so you have to want it. Uh, you have to want it more than you want anything else in your whole life. Um, if you can think of any other job in the world that you can do and be happy, do that, because this <laughs> is so hard. Um, all that to say, uh, if that is really your passion, if that truly is your calling, if that really is the thing that you cannot breathe or do or live without and your job and your calling and your heart and your soul and everything in you says that you're a storyteller, then tell your stories and then everything will fall into place um, as long as you work your ass off. <laughs> so uh, number one, uh, get involved with your local community theater as an entry point. I always recommend that because one, you're also meeting like-minded people. Two, you're, con you're contributing to your community and to the arts. Three, um, it's free, right? Um, and I think that that's always a good way to dip your toe in to see if you actually want to do the work, if you actually want to um, uh, struggle. <laughs> and four, um, if, if it's something that you know suits you. Uh, you frequently will not be cast the first time you audition for your community theater, but that doesn't mean you can't volunteer in the box office or building sets or doing set, uh, stage work or background work or any sort of number of things. So I always say start with your local community theater. Uh, two, if you're in school, uh, high school, college, whatever, uh, go to sign up for classes, uh, participate in your theater program, participate in forensics. I was in, I was in forensic all through high school. And it was great. Um, it, it really shaped a lot of who I am today. Uh, three, uh, get comfortable with the word no. You're gonna hear the word no 99% of the time. If you go out for 100 auditions and you book one thing, you are considered a successful actor uh, because the majority of people will audition for thousands and get nothing. Uh, and that doesn't mean that they're not talented and that doesn't mean that they're not driven and that doesn't mean they're not passionate. It just means that they didn't get cast. 
Uh, and there's no telling why, really. Only the casting director knows that, or the director, depending on who you're auditioning for. Uh, five or four, wherever we're at. Uh, surround yourself with like-minded people. You'd be surprised how many times you'll get a job or a callback or some, a, re a referral or something like that because somebody was like, oh, you need somebody that can scream? I know this bitch. Um, eight, seven, uh, six, five. Anyways, somewhere in there. Um, I kept well dinner, no, oh, educate yourself. Read, read and take in as much art as you can. Go to the movies, go to plays, go to weird art shows. Uh, go to weird concerts, um, go to, you know, mainstream concerts in mainstream plays. Uh, just intake as much art as you can and make as much art as you can, uh, whether that's writing a play or producing your own show or directing or whatever it is, create and create uh, without holding back. Uh, your, the things that you make are not always going to be good and they're certainly not going to be good the first time around, but it's the people that keep failing, right? Uh, was it Beckett, um, ever, uh, ever try, ever fail, no matter, try again, fail again, fail better. And that's such an important mantra for creatives because you have to keep trying and you have to keep failing and from every failure, you get a little closer to your goal. I failed a lot. I was once in an all-girl punk band, awful. So, those are my tips, whatever that's worth. Also, I like the tights. Thank you. Thank you. My reaction to seeing the very first episode of Attack on Titan. My reaction to seeing the very first episode of Attack on Titan uh, dubbed was, oh my god, I got cast. <laughs> That's always nice. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was a good episode. It was um, alarming. Uh, I think, without spoiling anything, when a certain woman has a certain thing happen to her. Um, that was heartbreaking, and I was like, what, no, you know, um, I think I was just as shocked as everybody else, uh, and just as upset, but it definitely pulls you in immediately, so I love that show. Right, thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised no one's asking me my hero questions. That's crazy. This is the first panel in so long. Hi. Um, so my question is, what was the hardest line for you to, like, get through? Uh, for any show, or for Mikasa, or for... Mikasa, for so sure, sure, sure. Uh, the hardest line for me to get through um, would probably be in season three when a uh, choice is being made on a roof. And, oh. right? Oh. Right? See? I'm telling you, but I'm not spoiling you. Um, so when that choice is being made on the roof, uh, that was a really emotional and messed up moment in my brain. Um, that was, uh, to get that line exactly how it was, uh, was probably about 30 minutes of just sobbing uh, in the booth and then screaming and sobbing and screaming and sobbing. Uh, but in between takes, it's harder to get back into that headspace. So it's easier, uh, not emotionally, it's worse emotionally, but it's easier and more uh, timely if you just stay in that traumatic space. So it was basically like in a, in a padded room with two screens a director and an engineer in another room looking at me through the glass and me just sobbing and putting myself physically and mentally and emotionally in that spot as if I was on the roof, uh, you know, debating what they were debating. Uh, it was just 30 minutes of trauma and sobbing. And then afterwards, um, when uh, Mike was like, okay, we got the take, I like that one. Uh, then I was like, I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> I went home and I called uh, my partner on my way and I was like, he was like, how was the session? And I was like, oh, it was really good. And he was like, you sound really messed up. I was like, it's a pizza day, babe. And, uh, and he had pizza waiting. Yeah. Um, can I ask one more question? Okay. Um, I don't know like how you did it or how it happened, but like, if you were like drawn towards me, because I like for the role, when you were like asked to like voice or did you like audition, like what drew you towards your yeah, no, that's an excellent question. What drew me to, to, to her as a character to audition for? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I didn't audition for her initially. So typically when I go into audition or when you, one goes into audition, depending upon the studio and depending upon the director, and depending upon a lot of things, um, this particular audition, they had the sides. Sides are a picture of the character. Below it is a description of the character. And below that are lines that you read for the audition. 
Uh, frequently you do that remotely. Uh, for Attack on Titan, we actually did it in the studio. Um, and so I read through the, you know, the, the characters and I, I had already seen episode one, but I hadn't seen anything past that. Uh, so I kind of knew about some of the characters and I honestly, in, um, uh, in self-doubting Trina brain, um, I was like, oh, they're not gonna cast me as the lead. Uh, so I would, I, I wanna be in this property. I mean, I would have been happy. Hello. I would have been happy to be girl A that gets smushed by a boulder in the first episode, you know? Um, and I would have, I would have loved that. But um, I, uh, I auditioned for Sasha, like I said, and I auditioned for Armin. Um, and then I asked the director uh, who he wanted me to audition for after that. And he was like, I want you to audition for Mikasa. I was like, okay, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and then I auditioned for Mikasa and he cast me. And here I am. So I wasn't initially drawn to her, but that's just because of my own self-doubt and insecurities. You can do it, guys. Um, I can do it. You can do it. Thank you. Hello. Hi there. Hello. I'm a little tall. Uh, <laughs> uh, for Evangelion, you were Madi, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. That's like one of my favorite characters of oh, the series you. because she's new. Yes. Um, just, crazy. She's kind of complicated. Where did you draw inspiration? Because it's very different from like Mikasa and all the other characters that you played. So. Just wondering because like her introduction in the series was like intense. Yeah. Where did you get your inspiration for her? Just... Um, my inspiration for Mari uh, comes a lot from my older brother. My older brother has been an anime fan since we were kids. Uh, he was like, Trina, you should watch anime. I was like, you're weird, no, because uh, he's my big brother. And so I would disagree with whatever he said. Um, but now we watch anime together. We actually have a choreographed dance to the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. Oh, uh, yes. Our opening theme song. It's really good. It's so good. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the live action yet. Uh, my partner had never seen Cowboy Bebop. I'm, I'm gonna come back, I swear. Uh, my partner had never seen Cowboy Bebop before, and I was so excited for the live action. Like we got all the snacks, and we like I put on my my onesie, um, and I was really excited. I was like, "Yo, you're gonna love it! You're gonna love it!" And then I forgot that he didn't know about the choreographed dance. But when the theme song started to play, I like jumped up and did the dance. But it was weird because it was just me, so I was just high fiving the air because my brother obviously wasn't there. It was awkward. Anyway, uh, so yeah, my brother is actually where I got a lot of my inspiration for Mari from because one, he's insane, which I love about him, uh, and two, he- o Older um, or younger brother? Older, older. Um, so he's crazy, uh, and I love him for that, and weird, and just like, like the way that Mari is like about to go and kill an Ava, uh, but she's just like singing and having a great time. Uh, that is 100% my brother. Like, if he was gonna, uh, you know, go and, and risk his life uh, and fight something, he would be singing a little song while he did it. So, <laughs> Mari is crazy and I love her for it. Did he know that, by the way? Did, did you tell him? Like, that's pretty crazy to say. Yeah, I don't know if I've told him that. <laughs> I guess I, sh I could tell him. Just I saying, don't think he'd care. If it was my sister, I'd be like, I, thank you so much. I love oh, you more, so kind of <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, my brother's a jerk, too. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. He's the best. Uh, but if I told him that, he'd be like, okay. And then he'd be like, are we going to go eat or what are we doing? Uh, so, yeah. So, thank you so much. Thank for you so much. Hi. Hi. So, if you can remember, what is your favorite or most memorable lines from both Attack on Titan and My Hero? Uh, my favorite and most memorable lines from Attack on Titan and My Hero. Uh, from Attack on Titan, it is probably from season one when Mikasa thinks that that thing has happened to Eren and she's on the roof and she's other roof, other roof. Uh, this is the first season uh, and she's on the roof and she said uh, she's like going through this traumatic moment because she thinks her her uh, new uh, adopted uh, brother is gone and, and she says, um, <clears throat> I can do it. I'm strong, real strong. None of you come close. I am a warrior. And then she like flies off. Jira from My Hero Academia, her most memorable line, um, it's not my line. Um, uh, I actually didn't do the song. I didn't sing the song Aww. in the show. But the song is definitely uh, her, my most memorable moment with Jiro. Um, I, again, I did not sing it, but it's just such a beautiful song and I definitely listen to it when I'm feeling blue or under the weather or whatever. It's just a happy song. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, is there a line for Jiro that you do like or one that you find particularly funny or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna think about that <laughs> and I'm gonna circle back. 
I promise. At some point. At some point. Thank you. One more question. Hi. Hi. I don't really know any of the things to do. I just came here for one question. How'd you do it? How'd you do the audition and everything? Because, well, I kind of want to be an actor too, but I'm focusing on my studies more. So, yeah. how'd you do it, man? How'd I do what exactly? How'd you get the audition? Any of that? How'd I get the audition for what exactly? Okay, like I said, I just don't know you. That's okay, I don't know you either. How'd you get anything on Attack on Titan? How did I get anything from Attack on Titan? I'm sorry. How did you, he's asking, how did you get the audition for Attack on Titan? How did I get the, do you, okay. Well, that's Thank you. Thank you. Sorry? Yeah, you got a question? I'm sorry if I spoiled anything. I appreciate your time. Um, I know it's been a really hard couple of years for everybody. I know that it's been, um, everyone has faced their own specific challenges with COVID, with school not being open, with not being able to see your friends and family. Um, and I just want to say how much it means to me that you guys are all here. So that's it. Thank you so much. Tune in tomorrow, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out.